Hello, I am Mudita, and welcome back to Satisfactory. This is episode 14 of the Load Balance playthrough, and today I'm going to tackle most of the electronics. To be more specific, I'll be making a factory that outputs 100 quick wire, 6 AI limiters, 8 circuit boards, 6 high speed connectors, 11 computers, and 2 supercomputers per minute. I have almost all the alternate recipes available to me. I'm going to utilize the fused quick wire, silicon circuit board, silicon high speed connector, and Caterium computer recipes. These are great alt recipes that save on raw resources and most importantly, give me nice even numbers to work with. As much as I would love to make 60 a minute to completely fill a Mark 1 belt for each item like I am for so many of the other parts, that would just be much, much more than I need and would consume a whole lot more power than I want. I wanted at least 60 a minute quick wire, two supercomputers, and five or more of the other electronics. The extra amounts help make everything even instead of having to deal with crazy decimal points. I am going to be using these spots right here. So I know this is by far the most complicated and probably a bit ambitious factory I've put together. Since I want six total parts headed to my storage, this is going to be quite a complex process. But this right here is our roadmap. And as you can see at the bottom, I have the input of rubber and plastic. Since I already have those made, I'll be able to just plug them into the system here. But in short, we're going to be using one Caterium node. We'll need a total of four copper nodes and one normal raw quartz node. That'll provide us with enough Caterium ingots. The copper ingots are going to get split between copper sheets and the fused quick wire. And then we'll be making a good amount of silica for the circuit boards and the high speed connectors. Once we have the basics done, we'll be able to start making computers and then supercomputers at the very top. So let me quickly show off the blueprints that I'll be using. Starting with the smelters, I'll need two of the three smelter blueprint, two sets of four smelters, three sets in total of the five smelter blueprint, two sets of the seven smelter blueprint. And just like the five smelters, you're splitting it eight times and then looping one of them back in. So that's where I can't remember which side, this side, I'll have to add the merger and add that in at the end. I'll need four sets of the three constructor blueprint along with nine sets of the four constructors. For the assemblers, I'll need one of the two assembler blueprint, four sets of three assemblers, and two sets of the five assembler blueprints. And last but not least, the top floors will be filled with five sets of these two manufacturer blueprints. So next step is to build the towers and we'll start filling them with machines. And there you have it, our first two-tone tower. So this is gonna hold the bulk of the machines, but as you can see, we've got our pinkish purple quartz tower in the background. And if I go up a little bit higher, we can actually see the copper tower. That tower is gonna be making all of the copper sheets. The other copper tower is just right down here. So that one's gonna be a real quick journey. That one's gonna make all of the copper ingots for the fused quick wire, along with the copper node that this is built on. The reason it's two-tone is half of it's on a copper node, the other half is a Caterium node. So to keep things moving along, I'm actually going to fill in all three of the smaller towers and I'll give you a quick tour of them real quick and then we're gonna focus on the bulk of the project here. Okay, so let me show you how these are working. So we've got our Mark II Miner set to 150 because this is an impure node. We've also got our five smelters and that is being sent onto a little bus that's gonna head right over here. And it's going to join up with this bus that is going to bring over our plastic and rubber from over there. So those two belts are going to wind around here, meet up with this copper, and they're going to head on into the main factory. These two that are headed in from the other side of the factory are coming from the other two factories. So next we have our quartz tower. This miner is clocked to 255 raw quartz. And then we have four sets of our three constructor blueprints, all load balanced and outputting 425 silica. And last but not least, out of the minor factories feeding the main one is the copper. So this is on top of three normal nodes. So two of them are set to 210 and one of them is set to 230. So we've got 
two sets of the seven smelters there, two sets of the four smelters because the 230 node needed eight total, whereas the 210 needs exactly seven. And that's the reason I split it up the way that I did. I realized that the more efficient way of doing the copper sheets would have been to use the steam copper sheet recipe. And that would be more efficient as far as raw materials. This is actually more efficient when you look at it in terms of power because the refineries do cost a little bit more than all of the constructors will. Either are good options. I just decided it was gonna use at least two normal nodes no matter what. So I might as well just use all three and cut out the need for water and refineries. But all of the ingots are then being sent up to three different floors of 12 constructors, all making copper sheets, all being brought together for a grand total of 325 copper sheets. Now onto the main tower. I'm going to power through placing all the machines and then we'll go floor by floor getting it all belted up. All right, now that the machines are in place, let's go floor by floor and make sure everything's set up. So we've got our Caterium at 270 and Copper at 300, that's correct. So let's do this first floor. So these are gonna be Caterium ingots and they're all gonna be clocked at 100%. So let's do a little bit more load balancing on this floor besides just this, which let's do Real simple. So 270 is coming up, so that means, what, 135? So these are both gonna need to be Mark three, And get our Mark three into there. Okay, so this is where we're bringing in the plastic, the other copper ingots from down there, and the rubber. Now what I am gonna do is, I believe, which floor am I, I think, is it this floor? I think it is this floor. So what I'm gonna do, is, this is the floor that everything is going to end up leaving on. So we're gonna put one here and we're actually gonna put one, I think right there. So to make my life easier, we're just gonna place some temporary little scaffold in here. So I've got a place to work. Okay, so let's do rubber first. So we've got 240 coming from the plastic and rubber factory. We are going to just place a splitter here. 
So there's the 240 into here. We're going to place another right here. And let's get another row. But over here, we're going to do a merger. And we can just place that one close. Okay, so we've got 240 into there, so that means 120, 120. So out of this 120, I only want half of it. So there's the 60. So that brings us back to the 180 that we need for up above. And this right here is our 60 that's going to head to storage. So we're finally going to have both plastic and rubber in the factory. I'm um, in the storage. So the next one, the copper ingots are, we're just going to send that straight up so we can just get that out of the way so 150 needs a mark three and our 116 so that is a mark two and we'll bring that up to here so for this the easiest way is just going to be to do the kind of belt shenanigans with the smart splitter there we go so mark two and then what we're going to do is we're going to say any goes to the left overflow goes straight up so the rubber from there is just going to go straight up and then we're going to get rid of it so we can place that actually i can just spin this around can't i let's just put it there and then it's completely out of the way okay so that was a mark two this is mark one that's 180 right here so there we go so that's the rubber going upstairs so now we've got any and overflow so the overflow is going to be after this auto save so i want 60 on here but since it's not an absolutely full belt to make sure that i get the full 60 what we're going to do is we're going to do a section of mark two and then we're going to do the rest of it mark one so we need a little bit more and that is how we're going to get our 60 plastic into storage. So this is just going to be the next one in. This last one is going to be for the quick wire. And then the one that's coming on top is going to be our sushi belt of all the rest of the electronics. Okay, so I don't actually need that right there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to leave myself... A little note. I've started to do this a little bit more often and it's just really helpful. It can be just really simple. I know it's per minute. I know it's what it's trying to tell me. So there's 56 and that's plastic. If you've got a lot of different ones on the same level labeling which ones which like I did. Well now they're hidden uh, but with the actual kind of picture can be really helpful. So to make this not look ridiculous like it's just floating here, I am just going to use my floor frames and give it a little bit of support. Okay, so the other bit of load balance we have is the copper sheets and the silica. The silica we're going to send upstairs, but the copper sheets we're going to do right here, and we are going to use the same built shenanigans. So we have 325, which is very much not a full 480 belt. So we're going to put one splitter here. Another splitter here. And a merger right there. So the way this will work is we're going to take, let's see, the smallest belt I can do is that. So we want to limit this to the 60, but I need it to make sure that it grabs as much as it can. So let's make sure, so straight as any overflow is going to be to the left. So this is how we limit it to 60, but make sure that it's actually a full, full belt. So we want to split this two ways. So 30 there and 
30 here. So we've got 30 into here, and I want to split this all three ways. So there's 10, there's 10, and for this last bit, what we're going to do is we're just going to drop this down like that. And grab a merger. And I think, I think that can be Mark three, right? Because I think it should be 265. Let's see, 325 minus 60. So 265, perfect. So we've got a Mark three here. And then we can just delete these. Grab our belt, do that. Actually, these should be on this level now. Get rid of all this, and we can just bring this. So this is that last 10 that I needed to split off. And the reason for that is, let's get rid of all this and add some labels. So here's 50 copper sheets, and here's 275. And that's how we split the 50 copper sheets for the AI limiters and the 275 for the circuit boards. All right, and on to floor three. So this is bringing up 300 copper ore, and we're just gonna bring it up probably somewhere through there, just to kind of keep it out of the way. And it needs to split across 10 machines. So two of the five split blueprint makes it nice and easy. Okay, now we're on to floors four and five, the quick wire. So all of these are clocked to a hundred percent. So since there's two floors, we do have, this is actually really easy. Actually, now that I think about it. So we've got those. So we're just gonna make these mark one until I know which one's the copper. Cause that one will need to be a higher speed. Okay, so since we have basically everything already split in half, we don't have to merge it. Although I do need to do one more step here. So we've got our two mergers. Let's put a splitter right in the middle. I'm gonna grab our pole. Just one spot up so we can make our short little stubby one. And we do need to make sure it's marked three because from here to, this is where that 150 copper ingots from that tower is coming in and I need to split it between these two. So we've got 75 going there and 75 going there. Each one of these has 150. There we go. So that's how we get our 225 for each floor. And so now it's as easy as just building all this stuff up. And there we go. So that is all of the quick wire being fed. So we do get to do a little bit of load balancing with all of the outputs though. So I'm just, actually no. So since each of these, oh, I forgot to do the top floor. Okay, so let's actually work with this one since this is the one that's gonna be the one headed out. And I'm just now realizing, I think I put these too close. So hold on, let me readjust this real quick. Okay, so before I get to the outputs, now that I know that the uh, top one is the Mark three, that means these both need to be Mark two because that was 225, so is that one 12 and a half, so Mark two is fine. Oh, but before we move on, let's do some load balancing. So with the quick wire, I need to split all of this up in a couple different ways. So let's work on what's going back to storage first. 
so with three of them that means that this is 270 which is great because that is a full 270 belt so we can do mark three right into there so with that actually what we're going to do is we're going to make this a smart splitter so that i can any and any and we're going to grab our splitter again so i want 60 to go here and then i want to grab a merger is that not quite far enough there we go okay so if i've got 60 here if i split it all three ways that means that i'm gonna have 20 20 and 20. so if i take now i can grab this and this since i said that both right and left are priority so we're gonna do 60 and 60. So with this, oh, that's right, I need to spin this. Actually, we can do, let's spin this one. So you go there. You go there, and that should be straight. Perfect. Okay. So that's 60, 80, 100. So this last bit right here, I need to grab another merger. I'm just gonna set that right there. So this right here is 20. And let's see, this should be, what did we have? We had 270 minus, I guess 120, right? So it's 150 left on this one. So right here we've got One seventy, and this is our one hundred that's headed down to storage. It's gonna go into this one right here, so we can actually just put that there and that there. And that's how that's getting down there. Okay. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, so let's work on another split of the quick wire, which we need 200. So since I've already got 170 here, it seems pretty easy to just go ahead and take a splitter here. Let's go ahead and we'll merge these two together. So gotta make sure we use mark two. This one right there. Actually, wait. Oh no, that was right. Okay. So that'll be 30, that'll be 30. And then this 30 is just going to come right to the middle. Let's go ahead and grab one more merger. Okay, so 170 into here, the 30 out of this splitter. And there's our 200. So let's group this together. So this is 180. That's what I get for getting it right in the middle. I gotta merge other, nudge other things. Okay, so let's do some quick labels to make my life easier in a few minutes. So there's our 200. This, we basically took 30 out of the three. So that leaves us with 240 right there. The 200 quick wire was for the AI limiters. Now I also need 360 and 420 for two of the other recipes. So the way we're gonna do that is 
360 is just a nice even four. The machine's all belted together. So let's do that. So 180, 180, and here's our 360. So with these, let's grab our merger. We're gonna set this right in the middle. So this is 180. So I said the last amount was 420. So we've got our 180. So we need 240, which luck will have it. what we set apart right over here. So I'm gonna set that like that and this just like that. And then we can go ahead and just run this right along the roof. Into there. So there's our 240 plus the 180. So right here we have our 420. Now the quick wire is done, we have our AI limiters. So we just need to connect the 200 in total for the two machines and the 50 copper sheets. And for floors seven and eight, these are gonna house the silicon circuit boards, which need the copper sheets that we've already split, but now we need to work on load balancing that silica. So since this has a lot of empty space, let's go ahead and do that right there because it's also just the floor right underneath it. Okay, so now that the silica is ran up here, let's go ahead and split this up. So we're gonna use the smart splitter trick again. Since it's not a completely full 480 line, we are gonna have to use the little belt trickery. So what we wanna do is we wanna grab a splitter and let's go ahead and split this right there. And we're gonna grab our merger. I can go straight also need a merger to go that way okay so straight and right oh no that's mark two so that's our 120 but what I want is let's see oh, I can't do that short let's see Okay, so doing a chunk of it as Mark IV, we'll make sure I'll grab as much as possible. It's gonna limit the belt by the Mark I. So this is gonna be 60 going into here, 120 going into here. So what I wanna do is take half of that 60 and put it into there. So that's our 150. So then we're just gonna take our other 30 and we're just gonna go ahead and attach it to that merger right here. So the overflow, Okay, so this belt right here, out of the 425, we split off 60 and 120. So this actually only needs to be Mark three, And then that will have the other 30. So this and this can get labels. So here is our 150. And here is our 275 perfect okay so that is the split for all the circuit boards and then as far as the top floors go this is floor 9 we're doing the high speed connectors and we're doing the alternate recipe and they're all going to be clocked at 100 and let's set all the rest of the recipes real quick so floor above that Caterium computers all four set at 100%. And then the very top, the supercomputers are the default recipe underclocked to one each. And that gives us nice even numbers. 
And while we're down on this floor, we might as well split the output for the AI limiters because some of it's going to storage, some of it's going to the supercomputers. So the way we're gonna do this is we're going to grab a splitter. And then let's see, we want another splitter, I think right here. And we're gonna grab another merger. And we're gonna put that right there. Okay, so we've got 10 in total. So the way we wanna do this, because we want six to go to storage, four to go upstairs. So that's a three fifths and a two fifths split. So thankfully, I already know that the three fifths, that's our six. So that's just one half. Don't have to do anything with that. So the other one is the more complicated. So we wanna join up two of the fifths, right? And then you do have to split it all six ways, like you're doing a six way split. And we need to loop that back in to the beginning. There we go. So that's our five way split. Okay, and now we've got our labels. So now we know which one's four and which one's six. Now we can move on to the next one. So for floor seven and eight, I made a slight mistake here and I placed six assemblers for each floor where in reality it was actually only five. So I just replaced those, reset the recipes. So the amounts and everything were the same. I just definitely got the amount of machines wrong. So much like the AI limiters, I am going to need to split these between going to storage, computers, and high-speed connectors. So the large majority of the circuit boards are going to the computers. Out of the 125, I believe 100 of them go to computers. So between the last 20, some of them go to storage, some of them are going to the high-speed connectors. So we are going to work with that. So let's just go ahead and put this here. We can merge the rest of the three. So since each of them put out 12.5, that means two of them together is 25. So I just need to do pretty much what I did downstairs and split off. Do a five way split and split off um, five of these. So let's go ahead and put one here. And we can go ahead and go Okay, so there's the 25 So there's what would be three-fifths So with one of these, let's just go ahead and do that. We need to do the return bit And let's put this one there and I think you just do nice nice straight shot so here's the two fifths so we're gonna put one of them here so this right here this is our 20 and this right here is backwards right here is five okay so this will then join up with these. And that'll join up with the next floor and that'll be our 105. So with our 20, now we just need to split it another five ways so that we can combine them and get eight and 12. Okay, so out of either one of these sides is going to be the three-fifths, and right here is our two-fifths. So this is eight, and this one's twelve. All right, so that's the circuit boards. Okay, and then we can just take our remaining three that had the leftover five come up to this floor. And so now this is gonna have our 105 for the computers.
And now the rest of it is just going to be completing this belt work and getting all of the right amounts to the right floors to plug in to the rest of these manufacturers. And then we get to turn it on and get it all up and running. So I am going to go ahead and finish all of this and I will show you what it looks like in just a second. Everything is now belted up with all the lifts in the correct places, getting everything to the correct floor. The other thing I went ahead and did is send the plastic and rubber over from the factory over there. I figure it's already being made, might as well just have it sinking here. It just really makes things easier booting this up. When things start showing up, I can just delete these and send them into the factory. So now all that's left is to flip the switch and start the timer. And now that both the silica and the copper sheets are here, the circuit boards are going to start being made. So I can go ahead and delete these two sinks. So if you're like me and would prefer the belts to keep running continuously, since the circuit boards got started last, I'm actually just going to slightly kill production and I'm just going to take out each of these stacks. It'll take another minute to get the high speed connectors back up and running, I'm just going to throw it away. But I prefer to see all the belts running smoothly. 
obviously if you don't mind it'll boot up probably a good minute faster And there are our first supercomputers, which if these things are on and staying green, that means pretty much everything else has to be on. So all in all, a pretty quick startup time for almost all of the electronics. And there goes all the electronics headed to storage. So this bus is just going to go straight south and then meet up with the already existing bus for all of the steel products. And those are headed over to storage. But now that I have computers made in a pretty hefty quantity, I can now start using trains. So this will probably be the last of the ridiculously long buses that I'll have to make. So for the next project, I'll be working on crystal oscillators right over there, along with having some extra silica and quartz head over to storage. And from there, I'll be able to do advance to the next phase. Stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching.